Come, Holy Spirit, come. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. In your name we will continue to give you thanks and praise. Amen. Sisters and brothers, Tom has read the scripture, but I would like to lift one more verse, and that's verse 20, one more time. And hear it again. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Sisters and brothers, as children, we often played the game of follow the leader. It was a fun game where those who followed would try to keep up with the leader. We enjoyed the game very much so, but we always seemed to argue over who would be the leader of the game, right? I guess none of you ever played follow the leader. <laughs> Thank you so much, amen. Everybody wanted to be the leader, but no one wanted to follow at all. And when we would switch the game as good children in the country of Maryland and the cornfields, as Simon says, the same problem was true, especially by me, because I wanted to be Simon, but I was the shortest and the chubbiest kid, and they always told me no, but I had the biggest mouth. And I said, if you don't, I'll tell Brandy and you won't get any chicken for dinner. So I was Simon. Amen. But sisters and brothers, as my great-grandfather would used to tell me all the time, he would say, D, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. And he would go back to read the newspaper, and I would get so angry with him and tell Granny, Pop-Pop's picking on me again, Granny. And she would just smile and grin. Brothers and sisters, in carrying out the great commission of our Lord, there are many who are accepting the call to service. There are many who are stepping forward to lead in the struggle against sin. However, before there can be leaders, there must be first followers. The greatest leaders are those who were themselves loyal and faithful followers of a cause that took place. The text first considers that those who follow Jesus must be taught his way. Our Lord, at the beginning of his ministry, called 12 men to begin a training that would make them leaders of the church. In a few short years, they would do some awesome and some wonderful things. And we don't know all that he said to them in his conversations, but we do know that he said these words, follow me. In our text, he is speaking to Peter and to Andrew, saying, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. In Matthew 8 and 8, when some of the disciples complained about having to attend funerals and festivities and different things, Jesus marked, Let the dead be buried, they're dead, but follow me. And the same also happened in Matthew chapter 9, when we see about the tax collectors and the tables of changing and challenging of times, Jesus said to follow me. Matthew 19 and 21, Jesus told the rich young ruler to sell all that he had and to give to the poor, but to follow me. The call to follow meant much more than an occasional walk with the Lord. It was a call of training and also a call of commitment. The disciples had been taught the way of the old covenant between God and Israel through Moses. However, they had to be reoriented to the spirit of the new covenant that was taking place. They were aware of an eye for an eye, but had to be taught of the Lord's way of turning the other cheek. They freely gave a tithe out of obedience to the law, but had to be taught to give a tithe in, above, out of the love for the Lord. They kept the Sabbath to the letter of the law, but had to be retrained to know that the Sabbath was made for men, not for men, for the Sabbath. Jesus had great work in store for the chosen disciples, but not before he trained them to learn the ways of the kingdom of God. 
The way of the world is much different than the way of the Lord. I am a great believer of that. The way of the world is to do evil to them that do evil to you. But the way of the Lord is to do good to them that spitefully use you. The way of the world is to do unto others before you do unto you. But the way of the Lord is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The way of the world is to get all you can, build bigger barns and bigger stables. But I hear the Lord say these words, what does it profit for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Brothers and sisters, every child of God should stay in hear these words. Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me how to love my enemies. Teach me how to obey thy commandments. Teach me how to read and understand your word. Teach me how to lift up your name and praise you even when I don't feel like praising you. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. That's what I'm talking about right there. Secondly, sisters and brothers, our text indicates that Jesus requested to follow me also demanded a commitment to the kingdom. It required that the disciples would put aside some of their personal pursuits to make room for the work of the kingdom. Nathaniel had to come to terms with himself under the fig tree for a while, and he had to go work for the kingdom. Simon, Peter, and Andrew had to give up fishing for a while to do work for the kingdom. Today, when the Lord says, follow me, it might mean putting a few of our choice activities and things on the back burner, but we must follow him. When the Lord says, follow me, it means that we should stop what we're doing that we should listen and we should give an attentive ear because we've got some work to do for the Lord. When the Lord says, follow me, sisters and brothers, that means that I must put myself, Demetrio, to the side. That means that my agenda that I had scheduled all laid out in beautiful colors, if you ever come to my office, you'll see what I mean. I have to stop. I have to listen in my frustrations. I have to begin to say, God, I am ready to follow you. I follow God so much, sisters and brothers, that on this Sunday, I'm here at Trinity First in El Paso, Texas. If someone would have told me 10 years ago that I would have been here, I said, no, I think you have the wrong Demetrio. <laughs> so much so that, sisters and brothers, I had to Google Earth this place and find out if it was real. <laughs> but I had to follow Jesus. I had to be of service. I had to have a willing heart to know that if God was leading me to this place, that somehow, somewhere, we would get together and we would do kingdom work. Sisters and brothers, for far too long, here at Trinity First, we have lost sight of our first love, and that is Jesus the Christ. Far too long, we have put our own personal agendas before God. And I'm here to tell you that we must make this thing right. It does not matter, sisters and brothers, what one might say or do to you. What matters is that you are living a, a worthy life to God. What matters is, are your hands and feet ready to do work for Jesus Christ? Because he has called you to do the work. He said, follow me. There are moments where I want to tell Jesus, no, I'm not following you today because I don't want the frustration. I don't want to be talked about. I don't want to be seen as this person who has to always go out. But sisters and brothers, when I sit back and wonder, I sit back and think things over, I truly thank God for saving me. I truly thank God for giving me ears to listen or heart to feel. I thank God for giving me the willing heart to be of service to all God's people in all places. I don't know what the future holds for us, sisters and brothers, but this one thing I do know, that if Jesus goes with us, 
we will go anywhere. That if Jesus goes with us, sisters and brothers, that we can go on the highways and the byways and to the alleys, and we can tell someone of the goodness of the Lord. Someone should say amen. 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 Yes, I'm going to walk and preach. Is that all right? A few weeks ago, I got an email from Chuck here who invited me and others of you to come on a mission journey, right? And Chuck, where did we go Friday? He says a couple of miles from here. It felt like eternity for me, but a couple of miles from here. But when I got to this place on Friday, and Andy was there as well, there was a slab of concrete that was laid out and walls that were already pre-built. And by the end of the day, the sun began to set, and I began to look at a house that was built. I began to look at this mother and her young son who was very shy, and who told me he didn't speak English, but he understood every word I was saying. And he could give me a fist pound. But sisters and brothers, as I was there, and as I began to look and began to see these young children walking these streets, with no shoes and not with clothes that we wear. But I begin to see the joy in this mother, the joy in her, her siblings that were there as well, that she had nothing just a few days ago. But on Friday night, she had a home, a two-bedroom. The joy to my soul is when Andy was finished plugging up all the electric for the lights, and we ran the cord from one house to the next. And Chuck and others said, cut it on. The lights came on. It gave my heart joy. Joy to know that I had to follow Jesus that day and go. I had a lot of other things to do. But Jesus told me to follow and to go. Follow and to be of service. And so sisters and brothers, this day, I don't know if you ever had without. I don't know who introduced you to Jesus, and I really don't care. But what I do care about is your salvation and your relationship with God, and I do care if you are making a difference in this world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, every child of God should be committed to following the leader. And the leader of our faith is that of Jesus Christ. See, if we follow Jesus, he will bring light to the darkness of situations. If we follow Jesus, he will bring hope in the midst of despair. If we follow Jesus, he will bring us happiness hmm, in the midst of sadness. If we follow Jesus, he will give us strength in the midst of our weakness. If we follow Jesus, he will give us peace in the midst of confusion. If we follow Jesus, he will bring us understanding in the midst of misunderstanding. There's a song I remember singing in BBS. And the song my great-grandmother taught me, you'll hear much about her as I'm here training. But we would sing this song and I used to hate it. Because I felt like we had to sing it every year. But it's a song that in my life journey, I had to journey with Jesus. And the song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Sisters and brothers, we have come a mighty long way. And as old saints used to say in my home church, I've come too far to give up now. This Sunday, please decide to recommit your life to following Jesus. Recommit yourself by being a part of the Jesus movement. Because I want to make heaven my home. I have a loved one over there that I must see. So while the blood runs warm in my veins, I have decided to follow Jesus. And I want each of you to follow as well. Amen? Amen. Amen.
And at this time, 